Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, um, I took a small temporary job this summer, and I am not going to be with you this evening, but Brother Johnny uh, encouraged me to go ahead and put a video up on Facebook to continue our study in Daniel, and so that's what I'm going to attempt to do here before I go to work. Lord willing, his word will meet each of our needs. Let's open up with prayer. Father, this evening as we look into your word, we want to hear from you. We want you to be preeminent in every conversation and preeminent in our hearts. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So the message that I brought um, last week, I taught, I used a word called the remnant. We discussed a, a good bit about what the remnant, what my idea was about the remnant and then what it intended and what the Bible actually said about the remnant. And I think that through the process of that, I may have jumbled the issue because for me, there's one takeaway from this whole thing. And that is that God's grace was working in Daniel throughout the whole thing. That was the point I was trying to make. And for me, when as I started studying deeper on the remnant, then I realized that God's grace worked at a deeper level and extended to other factors, not just for Daniel and for his people. And so I want to look at um, that aspect, but I want you to see how the grace of God didn't just work in Daniel, but it worked through Daniel to um, and a, a influenced I'm using the word influenced. It wasn't a, ch a culture maker or a culture changer, but it was a culture influencer. Um, and I could even go a step further and say it was not Daniel's intention. Like he didn't set out to influence culture. That wasn't his purpose and his intention. His purpose and his intention was uh, to uh, himself to follow the Lord aright in his heart. So let's start with that idea. So we talked about the man, Daniel. Uh, we talked about, and so this is dealing with his motives. And this is going to lead right into um, Daniel chapter 2 and how his ministry began. Uh, Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. That was his motives, right? So that those actions or his manners influenced those around him. It influenced the chief of the eunuchs. It influenced um, his other caregivers. It influenced the king. But his motive wasn't to influence them. He wasn't using religion as a tool to effect change. He was being sincere and right with his God. And God used his him in that way. I think sometimes we get the cart before the horse in that sense. We are trying to trying to move, trying to manipulate situations. Um, in fact, I bumped into this whenever I was in Bible school. It wasn't New Orleans or anything like that. So um, it was a completely different school in a different state. Um, but 
where basically the the idea, the mentality was how to get things from God. That was the mentality. How to get things from God. That was the actual language that was used in this message. And that's how most of the ministry, quote unquote, ministry was conducted. You are leveraging whatever resources you have to make God do what you want him to do. And that's completely the wrong, wrong, wrong motive. Um, God doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't need anything from us. We have no quote unquote leverage over him. If he chooses to bind himself to us in covenant, that is his prerogative. That's his initiation, and he is accomplishing his work through that process. And so Daniel's motives and his manners, you know, to follow the Lord were an outflow of his submission to the Lord, not his manipulation of the Lord. And so I think that's an extremely important uh, point to make in what follows. Right. So his ministry, it says uh, the very last Verse of chapter one, we read it last week. Daniel continued even under the first year of King Cyrus. So Daniel's ministry covered a long, a long, um, a long time. In fact, it covered the entire 70 years because it was in that very year. King Cyrus came to the throne that he declared that he made the decree for Israel to go back into the land. So Daniel's ministry literally covered the entire 70 years of captivity. And that 70 becomes very significant all through the prophecy that God gave him. So we're going to talk about his message right in chapter two. The king had a dream, and Daniel's gift as an interpreter of dreams, in fact, that's one of the things that the Lord gave us here in chapter 1, says that the four children of God were skilled in knowledge and learning and wisdom, but Daniel had understanding of all visions and dreams. So Daniel had a special gift when it came to understanding visions and dreams. So in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherein his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show to the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king and the king said unto them, I've dreamed a dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king of, in Syriac, or that's the language. The Chaldean language is called Syriac. O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream 